the island of Sumatra lying along the destructive plate boundary on the northern margin of the Indian Ocean. If you look closely, you can see that the island seems to be cleaved by a fault, a tectonic lineament. It makes a scar in the landscape. Linked linear valleys, sometimes bounded by jungle covered mountains. And volcanoes, some active, some dormant. This is the Great Sumatran Fault System. Why is it here, away from the plate boundary? The region has lots of earthquakes. These are the ones just in the crust, but we can strip away the smaller ones. This is the forearm, the site at the Earth's surface of plate convergence. But on Sumatra, there are several other big earthquakes along a line. This is the Great Sumatran Fault. So what sort of fault is it? We can use the earthquakes to determine the movement directions on the fault. Beach balls, so-called fault plane solutions. We can take one beach ball and analyse it. This is the fault direction, northwest southeast, a near vertical cut in the crust. The shaded areas are where rocks are compressed in an earthquake. So this is the sense of slip so-called right lateral. The northeast side of the fault is moving to the southeast compared to the other side. Well, it's very different to the beach balls in the forearm. These beach balls look like cat's eyes, like this. These don't show strike slip faulting, they show thrusting. Faulting like this. This is the beach ball implying a fault trend and a direction of contraction that's perpendicular to that trend. So let's take this understanding to the fore arc. The rocks of the fore arc then are being compressed like this, but the convergence of the plate relative to a fixed Eurasia, the top of this image, is like this. How does this play out? We can think about it in 3D. The floor of the Indian Ocean is subducting down beneath Sumatra, and this is the slab. The plate convergence is oblique. The slab sinks down in this direction. But the forearc is like this. The thrust slip is in the dip direction of the slab, not parallel to plate motion. We can add the Great Sumatran Fault to this. So here's the game. And we solve it by constructing a vector triangle relative to Eurasia. The oblique plate motion is in yellow and it partitions into thrusting and strike slip. If we take a plate displacement vector of six centimetres a year and an obliquity of 25 degrees, then the trigonometry gives us a slip rate on the Great Sumatran Fault of a shade over 2.5 centimetres a year. You can use geodetic surveying to get estimates of active slip rates along the Great Sumatran Fault, which in the north broadly match our quick velocity triangle estimates. But in the south, there's a slip deficit. Nevertheless, overall, our approach is working. We can explain the complex beach ball pattern of active deformation revealed by earthquakes by partitioning of the oblique convergence across this segment of the plate boundary. And moving back to 3D, here's how it looks. The Great Sumatran Fault carving through the upper plate. But this means the fore arc is moving relative to the rest of Eurasia and the Indian Ocean floor. Some people think of it as its own plate a so-called sliver plate, a slice of Eurasia. 
So why is the Great Sumatran Fault located where it is? Let's add the volcanoes active during the Holocene, the past 10,000 years. They coincide with the fault. On a large scale, volcanoes and fault coincide. So it looks like the fault is tied to the volcanic arc, perhaps because the magma here makes this part of the crust weaker and therefore more prone to faulting. To finish up, let's see how the volcanoes and faults can be tied together. Around the city of Bukatinggi, the one-time temporary capital of the Republic of Indonesia. A series of strands on the Great Sumatran Fault System that have so-called right-stepping segments, which for a right lateral fault system generates small rifting areas. And here are the Holocene volcanoes, some of which have erupted in the past few years. So the fault segmentation may be locating the individual volcanoes. And over geological time, the overall volcanic arc is localizing the regional Great Sumatran Fault System. The island is a complex plate boundary, a zone of oblique subduction partitioned into four arc thrusting and regional strike slip faulting tied to the volcanic arc. It's a great illustration of interacting internal earth processes of magmatism and deformation 